Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. I thought I'd just give you guys a bit of an introduction on what we're actually doing in the shop at the moment. So, first off, we've got the, in the diner room, we've got a Camaro ZR1. Um, this particular vehicle is known as the Stormtrooper with the rat. Just trying to figure out a misfire, we've figured it out. Um, just a broken spark play, we'll sort that out and get it back on the dyno, we'll get it running on the dyno, check everything. Uh, we have Nathan is working on this little E30 here, plus T, all custom, built in-house, including the manifold and all the piping. We're going with the Haltech R3 in this, which is all going to be wired as well. Uh, we've got to go over Kessler's 86, which was at Calpo the other week. We've just got to go through everything. Same with the S2000, we've got Bay Park coming up. We've also actually got the Fender Linens D1 car, which is in Pro Sport. I had a problem with the engine, so that's that engine down there, which is his spare motor out of his road car, which we're going to throw in, just to get the car going for Bay Park so we can at least compete. The Golf actually has a 2 litre stroker in it. There were some issues with the build, which we'll touch on that, and we'll um, go through that and tell you what went wrong. We've got Kelly hanging out of this Falcon here. So this thing's over 500 kilowatt wheel, gets used as a drag car, so it's got a TH400 power glide in it. So we're just looking to shift the selector display up to it, so that way the cert guy, but well, it's a requirement for cert. The cert guy's come in and later today, so he can uh, go over the final check on that, so we can get that back to the customer. As you know, we have the S2000 that's back from D1 at Menfield. So just touching on that, we actually probably got the best result we have so far. Alex managed to make, in, uh, make it into top eight. The car drove really well. We did have an issue at the start of the day with one of the bolts stripped out in the knuckles, so we had to do some modifications and just check that throughout the day to make sure we weren't gonna have any issues. They fixed the diff and everything. There is an issue in the front steering, but we've figured it out. Alex was complaining about going full lock in one direction and finding it very difficult to pull it back the other way. Now, being an electric power steering rack, there sh should be enough kind of power there. And, you know, the fact is that we can adjust that and the tune on how sensitive it is. And it wasn't helping. We had it up on the hoist the other day and we've actually checked the rack and it's actually hyper-extending. And it's got probably about 10 to 20 mils of play in the... Um, in the front which is why the wheels are moving around quite a bit which we've noticed in some of the videos from D1 after we're playing them uh, but yeah the car other than that it just needs to go over a, do another check on it make sure everything's all good and then uh, we're back in was it four weeks I think yeah it's the was it 12 30 40 or something something, yeah. something around there of next month for Bay Park so both cars will be there as well as Ben's car yeah so um, that's what's happening in the shop at the moment we've got some other cars coming in for some other work so uh, yeah probably JP will jump on and uh, tell you what we're doing with them <laughs> <laughs> oh thank god what's up hello Clarice see what the shit I have to deal with all the time anyway we're gonna have a chat about Kesco's car but before I get to that, I just wanted to say uh, thank you to everyone that's kind of been supporting us on the, not technically the product launch yet, but the, the launch of the FKFL Turbo, all the support that we've received from uh, our tuning video with the FL5. It's been awesome. Our little channel kind of we grew very, very quickly from that. A lot of views, a lot of new subscribers, so I really, really like that. Thank you very much. But today we're gonna to address some things about Kess's 86. So if you'll remember from the last video, I was quite happy. We were just stoked. We really didn't have anything to do on the car or anything like that. However, throughout the season, obviously some people have also made comments about how smoky the car was. Do you smoke? Yes, I do. Yeah. All right, we'll just stand by. So I'm gonna address that today. When we originally put the car together we got the engine back from the engine builder who would outsource some machining we got the car actually running uh, one week before round one and round one was our our test because we like to do things the hard way um, and we obviously had issues and we addressed them but yes the car was smoky car still made uh, 510 horsepower at the crank or something like that so it was still performing but unfortunately the season started and we had no way of pulling it down. We didn't have any time. There was also some private events that Kesco wanted to do as well as D1 this year. So we kind of had, up until now, we kind of didn't have any time to address the issue. We just kind of rolled with it. So 
Fast forward to last round, car drove phenomenally well. We battled our way up. We had um, a couple of OMTs and you know, we were all having a good time. Except for the bit that uh, Pierce didn't film was when the trailer broke at the end of the day. <laughs> but yeah, I'll get uh, Pierce to cut into me being like, yeah, the car's good, going good, we don't have anything to do. Um, nothing, nothing really to do. I, I kind of like these kind of rounds. There's nothing broken as of yet. But then the last battle against Case, we pulled a log and we saw some knock. Now we knew exactly what it was, but we didn't have any they got no way of fixing any knock right there and then at the track, so we gave not Keske a... Well, not this knock. We couldn't fi fix this knock at the track. <laughs> we gave Keske a tap on the helmet and told him to, to go for it. <laughs> You're my best friend! You're my best friend! I'm in there with you! I gotta get going! No, no. Um, and we'll deal with the consequences later. Luckily, nothing exited the chat, nothing nothing went wrong, except for that we had a knock count by the end of that last round of about 700. Now, having a knock count that's at 700 after an entire session of two battles means that it's localized to one cylinder. The reason we knew exactly what it was was because the knock count was obviously shouldn't be there, but it was so low that we knew exactly what had happened. Now, I've got the cylinder head down here. I've literally just finished pulling this apart, so I'm in a bit of a shambles. So I'm gonna organize everything and it'll all go in trays and everything, OCD people chill out. But yeah, I've got the cylinder head down here. Obviously, the smart kid in the room will see we have three carbon cylinders and one clean cylinder, which is where the oil's getting introduced into cylinder three. Now, cylinder three is a little bit out of round. So we had an oil control ring issue as in we were doing too much blow by on the cylinder pretty much right from the word go but it wasn't that bad so we made the call to run with it the car was still making power we weren't having any knock we weren't having any lean spikes in the logs so normally when you've got a lot of oil being introduced into a cylinder we would see lean spikes the car wasn't doing that it wasn't doing it, so that's why we made the call to run it Oi! Stood up by hand, man. So that's why we made the call to run with it um, and why it was you know, Thomas, the, Thomas the tank engine for most of the, the rounds, but got obviously a little bit worse and then last round it, it came up. So you can see, like I said, the cylinder three is not happy. The oil, contro uh, oil control ring failure was um, also due to the cylinder not being perfect, but I mean, again, it's an outsourced thing. It's not something that we did in-house or anything like that. And it was just kind of a combination of time, rushing, machine shops available. We used a machine shop that we don't normally use. And here we are. So I'll show you the bearings and stuff. There's, there's not, the engine inside is perfect. There's no wear, there's, there's no um, massive detonation marks or anything on the cylinder head, as you would have just seen. There's nothing weird on any of the pistons, but where, where it really went wrong for us is, as you can see, that piston's normal. She's got carbon on it. That's good. All the rings are perfect. The bearings, I don't know if you can see in there, are perfect. There's no hammering on any of the bearings or anything like that. There's nothing, nothing weird going on there. And the, the rings have still got tension on it. Oil control ring is still good. I can't flick it around with my finger or anything like that. The uh, cylinder in question, however, there's clearly something wrong here because that piston's clean. <laughs> Well, it's dirty from my fingerprints, but um, now on this piston here, the oil control ring has come out and it's all floppy. When I pulled this out of the bore, the scraper ring was over the top of the oil control ring itself, which means that it was pushing the piston out of its home and we had a complete open cavity, which was what was letting in the oil. It's a real shame. The car had been running really, really well throughout the season, apart from the smoking. And we made the call, obviously, we want to get to Bay Park. We want to give Cascade the best opportunity he's got to do, pull something out of the bag. Obviously, as you guys know, last year, we had a huge smash there. The car got completely peeled. today. 
really want to give him the best chance of redeeming redeeming himself there at the track and we want to have a good weekend we've been having a good season so far we don't want to pull out so we made the decision to pull it down for Cascade and we're building him a new bottom end this time with our preferred machine shop and um, we're going to get it fixed for him so we got some pistons from DHL on the way getting flown in from America and um, we've got another block sitting up there on the shelf we're just going to get it all ready for him so he can go out with 100% confidence no more smoking, no more issues that's something that we're doing for Cascade he's done so good this season we, we don't want to let him down so that's what we're up to here's the bottom end anyway as well as you can see the crank is in phenomenal condition we've got no problems there with the rod journals or anything like that I've got the crank sitting still in there but there's nothing wrong with any of the uh, main caps there's no wear on anything she's just she's quite a little honey of an engine unfortunately like I said she died because of that number three cylinder but because we're going oversized pistons and we're changing up the compression ratio a little bit for Cascade we're going to start with another block this one will live again we'll get it sorted but at this point we're just going to retire this block get the new one machine for him and get it running other than that you should see her at Bay Park all done with its new engine and um, might even turn it up a little bit no smoke no and no smoke <laughs> no smoke and no pancake <laughs> Oh yeah. Falcon. Oh, I don't know. What is it? Ta -da. No, that's a real lame fucking intro. <laughs> um, we've got Falcon G. Uh, Falcon G6E. Uh, do it to me. <laughs> <laughs> this customer, we built. Well, when did we put this car together? Last year, right? Year before last. Was it year before last? Yeah. Okay. Was first lockdown, I believe. I think it was. Yeah. So anyway, G6E Barramundi. It, up, it already had the turbo manifold and everything, so yep. it's got a precision turbo on it. He wanted as much power as he could safely on the motor, so we put a package together, valve springs, head bolts, upgraded oil pump, did the flex plate, but I think we did the flex plate afterwards, didn't we? No, it was all done at once. We did the flex plate because I remember taking the sumps off these is not good because it's like that big. Yeah. And you're going to drop subframe and stuff, so... Um, it already had the plasma main kit on it, already had the piping kit on it, and a turbo, like Dan said. But we added a catch cam breather system, flex plate, valve springs, head bolts, blow off valve, and Dan did some, some tuning, some page up. Yeah, so the software I've used is PCM Tech, and we're actually running the multiple maps. So we're actually having four different maps, and you can like play around on the cruise control buttons. And I think we've got a low boost map, a high boost map. There is one in there for launch control to load it up but that has been changed because which uh, this car's back for something else which we'll get to soon and then there was also a map with a ghost cam because he wanted it to have a lumpy f-boy idle bruh, bruh, yeah. bruh, bruh. so the reason it is back is as you said what we did it what nearly two years ago the zf trans if i can remember was pretty much factory we'd I did some stuff with the line pressure side of things just to try and, you know, handle the power because this is making 540 something at the crank kilowatt. The customers ended up slipping the clutches in the trans, but instead of spending, oh, how much is like six to eight k if you want to build a real strong ZF, it's not cheap. Um, he's actually put a turbo 400 three speed in it, and uh, yeah. So that can definitely handle the power, and may, because he mainly uses it for drag racing, this is like kind of the perfect gearbox for that kind of thing. I've had to go through all the tuning, we've had to turn all the auto stuff off to make it think that it's a manual. Um, I've also had to reprogram the ABS pump so that way it's not looking at the auto trans for the speed sensors and we've had to take the speed from the um, from the diff, I oh know from the ABS sensors instead of the gearbox because all of that's missing. And we're just finishing off doing the finishing touches which we've had to put a gear position display in it because the cert guy for certification New Zealand you need to see what gear you're in. Now he so can bang gears like a race car driver. Yeah. Bah, 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 bah. I think this ratchet was, shifter. I think this was doing high 12s, I think, before the gearbox gave up the ghost. But he was always chasing traction control issues, which I think it was just 
to be honest, I think it was just the train slipping. And I think that's why it's gone for the gearbox. So yeah, been on the dyno, it's still making the same power. It drives good on the road now. Uh, everything's actually working. Callum's just putting the interior back together because- We did have to modify the drive shaft hopes and some other oh, yeah. maintenance stuff, but it's not that's really- Cert stuff. Cert stuff, because obviously the now the drive shaft's changed and all the other bits and pieces. So we just have to fizz up a, a new drive shaft loop for it and, and that type of thing. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty much the same as every other barrow. It's spicy. Spicy. It's spicy. And it's um, fast AF. <laughs> and you can put all your mates in it and go hooning up and down. Oh, you can't even go up and down Key, uh, Queen Street anymore. No, it's like. Where have they shut it? Yeah, no. It's, no, it's all like bus lanes in one lane. No, you can't even, can't even do the. No, no. They've cut the speed down to like. So no, no, no. I, went, well. I, I had to go to the airport and I wanted to show some friends from Australia, you know, Auckland City. Yeah, you can't, can't really drive through there anymore unless you're a delivery vehicle and whatnot. So the old days are gone. Mm. You can now only hang out at Key Street Mobile. <laughs> but even that's like 40k an hour, isn't it? I don't, I don't think the speed limit was ever an issue. <laughs> who remembers, Mexico. if there's anyone that actually wants to answer me in the comments, who remembers when Victor Arena wasn't there and there's just that big gravel pit there and used to go and do burnouts at, in Key Street. Because it was Chinese Oriental markets. Before yeah, that, yeah. Used to, and there used to be one concrete pad in the middle mm -hmm. and you'd come in like a like a winner and come in and do some shitty front wheel drive burnout and then gap off real quick before the cops came. <laughs> and races up Bashing Point until some dude in a Commodore ran out of talent. Yeah. Was that, wasn't it an MX-5 that someone got sad? I what was it? hung out with people? No, the one that was on that video <laughs> recently. Oh. You know the one I'm oh, talking about? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, my car, my car. In my dream car. <laughs> oh my god! No! Oh, oh. Sorry, we're not trying to take the piss out of the guy's uh, dream car there, but the, but yeah, it, it, it's just a. It, these things just make power. If you do the basic mods to them. Plenty of different tuning solutions, like Daniel said, he's using software to do that. You can get Haltex for them, you can do all kinds of fa factory ECU still. Other bits and pieces, you just add a big turbo, add boost, and they, they make jack. Yeah. And like <laughs> head bolts, you can do in place, but you don't have to take the heads off or anything, you just do was it one bolt at a time. You don't even have to buy a turbo one, you could buy one like out of a freaking taxi and just put head bolts in that, and it'll still make power as mm. long as you. Uh, LPG engine is the one you want, because the LPG's got the same rods as the turbo motor. So yeah, uh, it, if you want to spicy up your taxi, we can we can do it for you. Mm. We've done plenty as well. Mm. Even if you probably remember Zach Hosking, Hosking Racing Developments, we were the original builders behind that. That how uh, one high speed drag was two years in a row. Oh, that was a white one. Yeah, the white one. That was a G60 as well. That was that was actually a pretty wicked car. And then I think someone else started playing with it. And it was never as good as it was before, but <laughs> yeah. In case you guys haven't noticed, I'm, I'm pretty JDM, I'm not really that interested in, um, I like building cars, no matter what the car is, but I personally... Do you love building that thing? It's not my job. Turbo or Tezzas? Nah, 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 nah. Uh, <laughs> you know, 3S. I was going to say. It's not really my so favourite engine either. JP's favourite motors, hands up, these are his favourite motors. He loves 3S's. 3SGEs, 3SGDEs, he loves LS motors, pretty much anything with one cam and you know with push rods, anything with push rod he absolutely loves. He loves anything from Volkswagen or Audi, it's, you know. <laughs> nah, not really. Nathan's making some noise, okay. he's busy doing stuff. <laughs> so, I will do the chat for his job. The C30 BMW was bought to us by the owner of Prodigy Plumbing. He he has a dream. He wants a nice weekend car for just doing whatever, going for cruising, ripping skids, just having a nice cruiser. So he bought it to us with the, this idea. Uh, we wanted it to be plus T. He wanted some nice fab, which is Nathan's the man. I definitely can't take credit for any of this. And he just wants it to be, yeah, he, he doesn't have a, have a horsepower target or anything like that. He just wants it to be nice, clean, tidy, and sort of his dream E30. So 
car was completely factory, stripped it down, start with the cooling package. We have a modified VLVN V8 radiator from Phoenix. We've got one of their uh, dual pass cast oil coolers. Nathan's made up this handmade dental dyed tie-in bracket for the intercooler as well. So it, it's a two-in-one mount. And just gone for one of their generic intercoolers. Nicely trimmed out all around here because it's actually a body kit. So when that goes on, you won't really see any of it. It's all nice and hidden. Started with the intercooler pipes and that kind of thing as well. We're going for the, the fabbed style radiator hoses with just the silicon ends, which I think looks really, really nice. Overflow catchment tank, which Nathan hasn't quite finished yet, but that just kind of mounts in this sort of OEM place. He's just finished this, because we don't, we don't have a horsepower target or anything, and these things are quite tricky when you do turbo kits on them. Most people kind of mount the turbo a little bit further forward, but we kind of want to make it a centerpiece in the engine bay. So because we're not trying to chase horsepower, uh, Nathan decided to go for a sort of like a log style manifold, which he made yesterday to mount our new Turbo Care TCR turbo. This is one of their new range. We'll be selling these as well as our FK8 turbo because it's the company that helped us develop them. So nice centerpiece mounted turbo and then it's the downpipe's going to come and kick down here around the steering shaft. Going to have a nice catch can over here. Once we've done all the fab work, we're going to start doing the rest of the upgrades. So we've got a new fuel system going into the car, trigger kit going into the car. Going to have to get a custom clutch made and I found uh, a nice helical style dip in the back have like a nice tidy package for him and for some reliability that way it should be nice to drive nice smooth engagement on the dip and then the customers made the call we're going to actually put a new Haltech R3 in it Nexus R3 so we'll leave some of the older stuff in the engine bay so it kind of looks period correct but it won't actually need to do anything it's all going to be run off a Nexus R3 with a PDM so it's going to be quite a nice modern take on an old car with a, with a little turbo kit. So Nathan's cracking on at the moment. He's a very busy man. As you can hear him cutting and grinding and welding and stuff in the background. And we will update you through Instagram and maybe uh, we'll do a follow up video if you guys want to see more stuff on this car as we go through building the dip and doing all the other bits and pieces. I think it's going to be just quite a cool car and show you that we can do other things other than SRs. <laughs> yeah, and it'll be real nice uh, when it's all finished. I think it's going to be a quite a sweet little street car.